Black Sheep, an original poem by Murphy's Law. It's a strange thing being the black sheep of the family, given how often we tend to disagree. I know I'm not the smartest man and I'd never boast, but to my perspective, I'm the only one who's not dumb as a post. I know they think I'm just as wrong as I know they are. That said, knowing that they are wrong still, it's kind of bizarre. Are we two halves of the same coin, following each other around all day long like a yin-yang or a circling Ouroboros of wrong? Seems to me the answer's pretty plain. One of us is right, the other's got a well-washed brain. So many people so convinced they're right, so many competent that their views are airtight. And though I try not to think in terms of tribes, people had divided in two, so let's look at both sides. Let's look at the red and the blue and see if we can't find out which one is more true. The left believes in climate change and vaccines. The right believes in what they're told by their screens. Those who agree with the left are scientists. Those who agree with the right are big money interests, especially the oil and coal businesses and people who whine about mass and social distances. And speaking of science, a new study has found Republicans are twice as likely to have COVID put them in the ground. Death rates of both the red and the blue were identical until which time the vaccine became available. At that point, the two hot sides had split, and now Republicans are twice as likely to be killed by it. According to the Corruption Perception Index score, of 180 countries, America ranks 24. Is it any wonder with all the parochialism, nepotism, lobbying, influence peddling, and cronyism? And now with Trump, it's become just so clear what the Republicans are really doing here. Look how quickly McConnell and others took to the lie that Trump was a good leader and a stand-up guy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, to be clear. They've been making those compromises through their career. Just one little fib about conspiracy theories to match their constituents and nobody queries. And I don't think it's out of the blue to say that they all know it's not true. If Reagan wanted money to trickle down from corporations, why would he overturn laws that assured that foundation? It's called the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890. It made sure they must reinvest back into their company. But now they can take that money and use it to, to take their stocks and buy them back making it look like their company is well into the black. It was passed at the time of robber barons, the Gilded Age, when workers slaved away for pennies at a very young age. Death was common with conditions so poor, and now we're seeing the return of child labor. Would it really be a stretch right now at this stage to call it America's second Gilded Age? But notice right now, the work week is only five days. When you work over 40 hours, you get overtime pay. Companies give you the minimum wage, both federal and state. Thank a union member if you think that stuff is great. Of course, Reagan, the great communicator, was also the cause of using union membership now being a fraction of what it was. When airline workers exercised their rights, Reagan had them all fired and ended their strike. What he was communicating to me seems quite clear. Fuck you if you're not rich and you want to work here. Recently, so many asylum seekers came to the border that even the left wing realized it was a disorder. So what did the left do? They responded. They decided to give the right what they wanted. But they force wide our eyes and our jaws way down low, and they get what they want, and still they said no. They don't care to correct any disorders if they can't accuse the left of wanting open borders. It seems so very clear that their motivation is all for their campaign and none for the nation. They're protecting their lifestyle so they can swill gin and tonics. Think about it. Where do we get supply-side economics? It's not at all an economic theory. It's true. Billionaires manufactured it and sold it to you. Don't take my word for it. Look it up yourself. It's a manufactured product like any on the shelf. They buy their own theories and sell them to you. Then they buy the media so they can buy your vote, too. They spend billions to ensure the facts are obfuscated for them to turn around and accuse us of being manipulated. If this sounds far-fetched, we know it's all true. We know what they spend, we know where, and we know who. A few billion right now on right-wing outlets, and no time will yield lucrative assets. They've convinced half the nation to march in the streets and demand they make our services obsolete. They make signs and chant slogans, feeling nonplussed, and insist they take our services away from us. A few tax dollars for welfare in the hands of the poor will help you in the end, whoever you work for. If you give corporations more billions in subsidies, then they'll have more money, but demand will just freeze. But take that same money, put it in poor hands, 
then they'll hire more workers to keep up with demand. They'll build more factories, which means more truck driving gigs, and wait staff to serve them and the guys who unload their rigs. Truckers need tools, sunglasses, the rated latest Android, truck stop workers, diesel techs, everyone is employed. Every vote for Republican throughout the nation is a vote against jobs and for corporations. It's not socialism or some authoritarian state. It's how America was back when it was great. It's simply how an economy is made, and we know for sure it works like this. It's called free trade. Some common sense regulation put into legislation because a corporation will always act like a corporation. If you're still having doubts, you're still unaffected, read the 1956 Republican Party platform when Ike was reelected. It's amazing how different it was in that day and age, back when Republican Party raised the minimum wage. Social Security and unemployment insurance both were expanded. Back in 1956, that's what Republicans demanded. The Bracero program was something they vowed to continue when they brought in Mexican workers to fill jobs Americans won't do. If you didn't catch that, I'll say it again. Bring in workers from Mexico, said Republicans. And if you think that's something, listen to this next quotation. Support for unions is the permanent stance of the Eisenhower administration. It makes me wonder about them now. What are their priorities? Do they really care about women's sports, or is it that they must hate some minority? And hell, fairness in sports is subjective. It's just my view. But the bathroom thing, that's a civil rights issue. You say a man can don a dress and perv on kids and babies, but they always could do that. What does that have to do with trans ladies? And transgenderism is not the latest new craze. They're bullied like hell. Researchers appraise. And the science is in now. I can give you citations from places like the American Psychological Association. You say Biden is the head of a crime family. It doesn't really matter that I disagree. If he broke the law, then boot him out when you convict him. But don't you want to take someone with 91 felony indictments and vote him in? But what crimes are you saying he commit? How can I know he's a crime boss without knowing that bit? You see how it always comes back to that part where billionaires spend billions buying your heart? Ask Joseph Goebbels how he captured a whole nation. Repeat a lie long enough and it becomes the truth was his quotation. So let's check in with the peanut gallery down in the thickets. What do you guys think? Chirp, chirp, chirp crickets. Ideologically, they're empty and hollow. Blaming liberals for everything is all that they know. Whenever I ask them about their ideology, I get Biden is bad revealing deranged psychology. They freak out when Target sells gay products and such. And Bud Light's ad with a trans woman? Triggered much? I believe in science and corporate regulation. They defend Putin, who attacked the sovereign nation. I believe in civil rights. And let's be honest, they're a bit racist and not just a bit misogynist. Mexicans are rapist drug dealers, so build a wall and then they'll get Mexico to pay for it all? Most immigrants fly, drive, or go by sea. How high and how long is this wall going to be? And what's all this talk about fiscal responsibility? At $20 million a mile, it doesn't sound like that to me. And speaking of policies that bring frustration, what is with all this privatization? Private prisons? What is that shit? How are private prisons supposed to make a profit? They don't. It's a scam. It's a swindle. It's phony. It's a way to make lots of cash for their cronies. They're funded by our democratic republic. Now, where I come from, that's not called private. It's public. I don't, I don't know about you, but it makes me steam to think of America as a money-making scheme. What are you really voting for is what you should query. What would be the thing that would make you leery? What would they have to do to fall short? What crime could they commit to lose your support? And I'll be the first to admit that, indeed, the Democrats aren't what they're all cracked up to be. It's true. They're wimps. They're milquetoast and cowardly. They constantly fail to stand up to tyranny. And I don't think it would be a huge disruption for me to say they're also guilty of corruption. But between the two, there's no comparison. The lesser evil should be clear to every American. And I know that voting for the lesser of two evils gets your go, but it's a lot less evil. So hold your fucking nose and vote. With the Electoral College in place, voting third party is just a waste. I know it's a drag, your options are so short, but voter apathy helped elect Voldemort. I honestly don't know what you feel when you hear the opposing point of view, but I can tell you I feel very little when I hear you because it's not true. Despite what you've heard on the internet or Fox, no school kid cat furries wanted to crap in a litter box. Trans people don't transition for social compliance. If you think that's true, you're simply anti-science. 
January 6th wasn't a tour, it was an attempted coup. And no matter what anyone says, evolution is true. And no, vaccines do not cause autism, and critical race theory is not racism. The Civil War was fought over slavery. Don't you see how calling it states' rights is unsavory? Liberals are not foaming at the mouth and perpetually offended. In 2016, Biden won like he intended. The only election fraud we detected were those who wanted Trump re-elected. These are the facts, so learn to deal, because the facts don't care about what you feel. I know that was scathing, and maybe a bit headstrong, but how else could it be with people so wrong? I didn't write this to make people upset. I didn't write it with an angry mindset. It's a cry to the wind, a pleading lament for a return to sanity to our once proud government. A yearning for America to come to its senses. So much is at stake, such huge consequences. Don't trust the charlatans with their splendid facades. They're selling you something. They're swindlers. They're frauds. They don't care about you or about what you need. They care about satisfying their endless greed. I'm just a man changing your mind I can't force. I just hope I can help a few onto the right course. I know this sounds corny, but honestly, I'm proud to live in the land of the free. America is such a wonderful locality, but it could be so much better with a little rationality. Where would the world be without jazz, blues, rock and roll? The world would be boring, bereft of soul. So don't you dare say I'm not patriotic. I'm a proud American who's not idiotic.